and hello and welcome into the ONTV Fantasy Football League show. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, along with my partner, Joe Johnson. No guest today, but uh, we'll take care of business. <laughs> it was a weird week of fantasy football. Uh, scores were pretty much down across the board. Um, honestly, there wasn't too many like exciting games out there necessarily as well. Just kind of a weird week of football, in my opinion. How how did how did you feel about this league? Yeah, it, it felt like league league averages were were down this week. A um, couple of odd, you know, scoring uh, production, but for the most part, once again, you know, the big story is injuries, lost more key players. Yeah, and now with us having to deal with bye weeks, people are in a bind. Yeah. Um. Our uh, <laughs> Tracy's uh, top-notch team. She's already conceding a loss next week because <laughs> of injuries and buys. Mm. I am hurting uh, due to injuries and buys. So, uh, it was ugly this week, but it could get uglier next week. Yeah. Now the nice thing about the ugliness of this week, we had some great matchups. There were several close games, and that makes fantasy fun. Yeah, the other two not as close, but uh, yeah, the this week is going to be crazy. There's six teams on by, which is one of the most on the season. I think yeah. one of the other big ones is week 13 or something like that. Um, so yeah, this will be the first real test for a lot of teams, testing your depth or being able to make any moves. Um, but you know, yeah. you try to draft for bye weeks, but when injuries play a role, you can't predict that i have yeah. several players on ir and some people who are questionable and out so mm -hmm. uh the waiver wire is going to come into play even though there's not a lot on the waiver wire this week and yeah. uh you're going to have to get that roster in or, or take a zero yeah it's it's going to be interesting and we'll, we'll get to that when we do the previews so let's start with our first matchup uh from the past weekend and we have the halftime honeybees Mm. Taking down Jordan's splendid team, 148.58 to 121.64. Pretty convincing one. And uh, this, unfortunately, two of the higher scoring teams in the league this week. And my brother still comes up with a loss. But as we keep saying throughout the season, uh, the halftime honeybees, Tua and Tyreek Hill. When yeah. those two connect and have good games, it's going to be hard to beat. And also... Surprisingly, Atlanta being throwing the ball lately, Drake London had a huge game with 21 points and Kyle Pitts with 14. Um, it seemed like uh, Becky just made all of the correct moves this week. And uh, she benched Chris Godwin and Mike Evans against the Lions, uh, which seemed to be to work out. Yeah. Um, my brother is still struggling with the quarterback position, playing Matthew Stafford. He did have uh, two drop touchdown passes i don't know if you watched the rams game at all yeah uh you know i'm red zone yeah puka nakua dropped a touchdown and tyler higby dropped a touchdown both through the hands of the receivers mm. um everybody else for the most part doing pretty well except for he didn't get much from his tight end but overall a pretty good performance yeah but, you know around. he's got double digits almost all the way down uh both of them got double digits and uh yeah. you know tyreek hill didn't he face uh didn't he get a uh, injury late in the game is uh is his status questionable for next um, week not that i remember no. he might have gone out for a little bit or something but, but uh, yeah what a what a league winner he's turning out to be 28.3 points 163 yards receiving a, a yeah. touchdown um he is a difference maker and uh yeah yeah uh, he is else? he's on pace for the 2000 yards that he was talking about at the beginning of the season he is yeah, so, if he can escape injury, he's uh, definitely uh, looking at MVP. Um, yeah. yeah, so uh, she got really lucky with her players this week, put up a ton of points. I, I don't think her lead was ever in doubt, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> she goes to 3-3. Three and three, Or they're both at 3-3, three and three, so they're, yeah. they're sitting pretty. Yep, and as you can see, uh, Becky's in fourth right now, and my brother's in seventh. <clears throat> so it just shows you how close the league is right now. Yeah, Pretty crazy. Uh, the next matchup we'll go we'll go through quickly. Uh, the Dak Knight rises. My wife Marie beat Drake's <laughs> Drake's team fifty three uh, to one forty six point four eight. Luckily for Drake, it didn't really matter. Uh, he had a lot of injuries. He didn't change his lineup. 
We've already gone through it with him once before. We'll have to remind him again. It's just, you know, another example of my bad luck. You know, I faced him last week when he blew up and destroyed me. Yeah. And this week he started Jefferson, who's on IR. He st- started uh, Johnson for the Bears, who uh, was ruled out before the game. And he only manages 53 points. Why can't yeah. he do that when I'm facing him? <laughs> yeah. And, and like I said, luckily it didn't really matter. Uh, he had some injuries on his bench as well. Uh, a lot of buys on his bench, so he was in trouble either way this week. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, Dak Knight Rises uh, was led by Prescott uh, on uh, Monday Night Football, an mm-hmm. entertaining game, close game, yep. and uh, he had to answer for his pathetic game he had last week, <laughs> uh, so he put up almost 25 points, uh, rush TD, pass TD, mm-hmm. just shy of the 300-yard uh, mark. Uh, Kelsey, of course, had another stellar game. He seems to be the only person in Kansas City catching balls that uh, have any impact. Uh, the other wide receivers just don't seem to be yeah. coming through for the Chiefs, mm-hmm. even though they're they're winning and yeah. they don't really care about my fantasy score. But <laughs> right. um, but yeah, Kelsey seems to be taking that team on his shoulders. Yeah, uh, she's also gotten a lot of production from Kamara coming back from his little suspension. He's played really good in the. Uh, the three games that he's played and she got 19 points from Justin Tucker Mm. just shows you sometimes how a a kicker can make a difference yeah and the next matchup is my favorite matchup of the week because it involved me and Sammy (laughs) Uh, Sammy and I had been beefing all week about playing each other I told him I didn't want to talk to him when I saw him (laughs) it's no ill will or anything hurtful but that's just how I am with competitiveness and ours came down to the absolute wire on Monday night. There were three three fantasy games that came down to the wire on Monday yeah. night. and The that, next three matchups we'll talk about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, <clears throat> you know, uh, Scott Hansen over on the Red Zone calls it the witching hour. When yeah. You get to, like, the fourth quarter of the last game, and you got a lead, and it's anyone's game at the end there. And yeah. As he says, wins become losses, and losses become wins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it got really crazy for me. Uh, Keenan Allen on the other side for Sammy. Uh, he had a great game, 21.5 points, seven catches, 85 yards, and a touchdown. And if he would have caught basically one more catch, he would have beat me. And uh, I think the Chargers got the ball back with like four minutes to go. Yeah, and I thought that was it. I thought you were toast yeah. when Chargers got the ball back. And-, and there was one point where I was down, or I was up by four. Keenan Allen had a pretty good catch that came in that drive, and then, like, almost the next play or two plays after, Justin Herbert looked Keenan Allen's way again, and luckily, like, I think there was too much pressure from Dallas, and Herbert got sacked or something like that, and I was just... Yeah, there was a sack, and then the the pick, and funny thing is, is uh, me, you, and Tracy were all counting on Dallas defense to try to secure our win. (laughs) Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, I know Sammy had a lot of trouble with his running backs this week. Saquon Barkley coming back from injury. He did a, he did pretty good um, by the end of the game. 13.8, though, is not you know, Saquon Barkley-type numbers. Um, he had to play Arizona's running back that played last week, and then he didn't really get much run uh, this week. He only yeah, had 2.7. Yeah, with Connor Ar- Con- uh, James Conner, yeah. right? with him out. You, yeah, he- they got another backup running back that came back from injury. And he took over that spot. Mm. But then they also elevated somebody up from the practice squad, and he ended up getting more touches than DiMercato, which threw a lot of people off this week. Um, Yeah. So it was unfortunate for Sammy to not get much production. I know uh, uh, with with Connor out, DiMercato was was the high recommendation on the waiver wire, but that did not pan out. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I don't think it would have been as close if Christian McCaffrey didn't get hurt. But luckily, he did get in. He got his touchdown like usual. Um, and I was carried this week by Adam Thielen. Well, Thielen <clears throat> is having a resurgent uh, season career over with Carolina. Like, come draft day, he wasn't even on my radar. I, I yeah. loved him as a Viking, and there were a couple of seasons where I drafted him, and uh, he just wasn't even on my radar. But he's had, like, several big games in a row yeah. now, and he's a, making a difference over there in <clears throat> Carolina. And then, of course, Cup. Yeah. My God, like... You know, my my fear of Cup come draft day was, you know, hamstring injury uh, is kind of a reoccurring injury. And 
yeah, he might come back and give you a couple of games, and then he might get hurt again. But this guy has stepped yeah. in like he like he was taking a vacation, and yeah. he came in. He's fresh. He's fast. He's catching the ball, and mm-hmm. uh, he he had like early on. I think in the first half, he was closing in on a hundred yards receiving or something. Um, yeah, he was uh, he was fantastic, and he's yeah. looking solid. Yeah, he's been good since he came back. I was the same way though. Even when I drafted him, I drafted him in the second round, which <clears throat> Normally is a steal for Cooper Cup, but everybody a little bit worried about him. So when he first came back, I was I was real nervous that first week, and he immediately has been putting up numbers. And now I I just don't have to worry about a thing really. Yeah. So any uh, points left on the bench? Moss, Zach Moss. Yeah, that which, was a that would have been a difference had he put him in for yeah. Dean Ricardo. That and Sammy's been burned on that two weeks in a row, which uh-huh. I, I I can't blame him though because the Colts are in a weird spot. They brought Jonathan Taylor back. He played, he had less points uh, than Zach Moss, but the last two weeks that Jonathan Taylor has been back, Zach Moss has played really good. So yeah. I yeah, think that's... that's still going to go away. I think Sammy made the right choice, uh, but it's definitely a tough one for sure. Okay. Now we have Tracy's team that we're going to talk about. And she went up against Malik's last place team that just recently got his win. And another one, like we just said, came down to the wire. Yeah, he was in last week on the podcast, and uh, we we said go down and take down the giant, and yeah. he gave it his best, and mm-hmm. it got close there near the end. Uh, Tracy was definitely biting her nails, and mm-hmm. uh, she she said that she was tweaking her roster just before kickoff of Sunday's games, and at some point as she was sort of experimenting, her roster got locked into place, and she ended up starting Higgins, who she didn't want to start. And so she kept she kept saying that's going to cost me that's going to cost mm-hmm. me and it almost did yeah um but at the end of the Monday night game her Dallas defense got the sack mm-hmm. which uh, is what two points in our league or uh, it might just be one. one point yeah I can't and, remember what the default and then they got the INT and that that INT basically secured the win yeah um I know that uh, that uh, CD lamb was making her nervous he mm-hmm. had 117 yards uh, seven receptions for 18.7 uh, and one or two more catches from him uh, might have given given him the win but yeah. uh, uh, Tracy's been lucky all season and mm-hmm. continued uh, last night on Monday night football and yeah uh, she walked away with a last minute win of course helping her secure that win was mostert. Uh, ever since uh, HN uh, was placed on IR, Mostert's been carrying the load in mm-hmm. uh, 34.2 points in our league. That's that's an impressive point total, yeah. uh, 115 uh, rush yards, two rush t- TDs and a reception uh, TD. Uh, monster, monster game from Mostert. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, it seems like anybody that just fills in for that Miami running back slot is going to get points. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that the T Higgins thing didn't matter. Like I said, I either wanted Tracy to win or I wanted to Mal- Malik to win by like 12 or something like that. So that it wouldn't come into play. Cause I don't like when that kind of stuff happens. Yeah. All right. And the third, the game of the W E A K, uh, yeah. the lowest point total to get a win is Ian's ingenious team over the lowly Hollywood blockbusters. Uh, another frustrating week for me. Uh, heading into the Monday night game, I was mentally prepared to accept the loss because he had Herbert mm-hmm. and Eckler going on Monday night, and uh, you know how those two can get. Yeah. But shockingly, uh, heading into chance. the fourth quarter, I was clinging on to a lead, and mm-hmm. it's so frustrating that you have that hope so late in the game that maybe I can come away with a win. Yeah, and uh, what killed me was that botched uh, punt. Did you yeah. see the botched punt? Mm-hmm. So the receiver called a fair catch, but he never touched the ball. Uh, someone was his own player was blocked into him, which made it difficult for him to try and get the ball. But had a Dallas, uh, or yeah, had a Dallas player, wait, how did it go? So had a Dallas player not touched the ball, it would have been yeah. Dallas ball at the line. But right. a Dallas player thinking it had been touched, touched the ball, chargers fell on it, mm-hmm. gave them position or uh, possession in 
scoring position. And when yeah. Herbert threw the touchdown, I was done. Yeah. And it turned out to be even closer than that because then when he threw his interception, that took points off of uh, Ian's total score. Yeah. And I ended up losing by point eight four. Yeah. Point eight four because of that botched fair catch mm -hmm. and the chargers touchdown late in the game. And I would rather lose by a hundred points <laughs> than to lose by 0.84. Yeah. As I've talked about before, I know close losses all too well. Uh, I agree with you there. It's, it's just, it's more frustrating than just getting blown out. Um, the other thing that I thought was eh, respectfully funny, um, there was that, run that Eckler first had, I think on second down when they came into that scoring position at the end that you're talking about. And he was stopped at like the one yard line. Yeah. And I was like, wow, maybe Joe got saved. And then <laughs> I think uh, they got one more play or something. And then, then Herbert threw the touchdown and I was like, ah, oh, he almost survived. Yeah. Of course, the difference makers in the game, he has uh, Amon Ross St. Brown who had a monster game, mm -hmm. 30.4. 124 yards receiving uh, and a touchdown. Uh, that was a difference maker. Yeah. Um, for me, I, I ended up leaving a little bit of points on the bench. Uh, you know, it's always frustrated. It's frustrating when you you start a player one week and they get outscored by your bench player. So then you start mm -hmm. your bench player and they get outscored by the bench player. Yeah. And so last week I was getting cute. And I, I benched my San Francisco defense for Washington playing the Bears. Mm -hmm. And the Bears put up 40 on Washington and, and I had terrible performance. So I put San Francisco's defense back in my starting lineup and they got outscored <laughs> by the Washington defense against Atlanta. Yeah. It's so hard to figure this game out. Mm -hmm. That was a difference maker. Debo Samuel. Um, well, that, and that's another thing. So, you know, when you lose a player to injury in the first quarter, that's yeah. a killer mm -hmm. you can, because that's it. And so he had scored only one point before I saw him sitting on the trainer's table. I was like, oh, no. Yeah. So one more catch from Debo Samuel, I get a win. Yeah. So it, it's just the cards were stacked against me at, mm -hmm. uh, this past weekend. So yeah. frustrating. And you can say that might have played into, you know, your San Francisco defense struggling because – the San Francisco offense was missing Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey. Oh, right. So they're losing some firepower, and then that leads to more often turnovers that Cleveland can uh, take advantage of. Now, uh, like I said, I'm dealing with injuries. Uh, Kieran Williams uh, is questionable. I don't know what his status is going to be in heading into next week. I want to say it wasn't looking good. Yeah. And I know that Ronnie Rivers, who's normally their backup, is also dealing with an injury. Yeah. Uh, so... We're looking at third string. Maybe that's why you need to target at, on the waiver wire. I was going to say, we can swing right into the waiver wire column right real quick um, because Zach Evans is that third guy up, and he is somebody that I was going to talk about that could be potentially something uh, good off the waiver wire. Yeah. Now, I will say you have to still monitor uh, throughout the week of the updates with those guys. But the last that I heard is that it doesn't sound great for Kyron Williams or Ronnie rivers this week, but always that could, that could always change uh, in a moment's notice. Yeah. You know, I, I try to create some depth and, you know, I have a uh, Damian Pierce from Houston and I thought, well, no big deal. I can plug him in, mm -hmm. but guess who's on a buy next week. Yeah. Pierce is. So uh, now there's talk that Jameer Gibbs might be back this week. Yep. They say he's trending in the right direction. Yep. Uh, so we'll see if I'm able to put Gibbs in my starting lineup, I'll be happy, but, yeah. uh, we need to see what, uh, what they're going to determine on his health status. Yeah. I will say too, that, uh, Gibbs is a little scary also because of the Baltimore defense being one of the better rushing defenses, um, in the league that lions Ravens game this weekend actually might be pretty ugly. Both defense is pretty solid right now. Uh, but I will point out Jordan Mason of San Francisco as well, uh, there's a chance that it could be Elijah Mitchell that takes over the backfield if Christian McCaffrey is out. Um, Jordan Mason is also one that got a lot of the touches after McCaffrey went out. Mm. But unfortunately, they play Monday night, so we won't know until kind of late notice. But that's an option. Another option, Kareem Hunt. Uh, he got a lot of touches uh, for Cleveland. He's not really the main guy. That's still Jerome Ford. But Kareem Hunt getting enough catches out of the backfield 
uh, might be a good uh, fill-in. And then, last but not least, if Jameer Gibbs doesn't go, Craig Reynolds is that next guy up. Mm -hmm. Um, He didn't produce all that much uh, in the last game, but you never know. Having a Lions running back can sometimes be useful. Is he the one that threw that block? Yeah. Uh, We should have points for blocks. Yeah, the block of the week. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, There's some other – there's wide receivers always available in this league um, because of a shallower league. Um, So if you need a wide receiver help, I would say any of those guys towards the top are are something to look at as well if you need it. Okay, looking forward to next week. Like we said, it's what a lot of people are calling the bipocalypse. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of players on by. I get the halftime honeybees uh, this week, which we're not too riddled with injuries a little bit. Uh, I believe Mixon and Pollard for Becky. So she's hurt a little bit more than I am by the buys. Um I am missing Adam Thielen this week and Joe Burrow. Burrow. So I have to figure out my quarterback situation. I don't th- I'm not too worried about the quarterback because Joe Burrow hasn't been all that great to be honest. It sounds like I, I read something. I'm looking at your bench here. Uh, Richardson mm-hmm. may be done for the season. I yeah. I, I might just leave him on my IR slot just for uh, a salute to him. Uh, sometimes I, I like to do that unless I need to <laughs> put somebody else on that. IR slot, so we'll see there. So you need a you need a waiver wire quarterback. Is there anyone you're eyeballing, or do you not want to tip your hand? Don't really want to tip my hand, but not necessarily. Like all the top quarterbacks that are up there, they're pretty good options. Um, I would say like the top options: Jordan Love playing Denver, really good uh, matchup, and then Geno Smith against Arizona. Those are two really good matchups. So if I get either one of those guys. You know, I'll be happy with with that. Um, so that will be that should be a fun matchup. I'm hoping because Tyreek and Tua are playing the Eagles, that maybe the Eagles will slow them down. The thing that stinks is that if McCaffrey's out, that's a big replacement that I'm going to have to deal with. Oh um, right, and that'll be like my last player. So I might have to go after Jordan Mason or something, or look deeper if I don't think I'm going to get the top priority. You know, it's an interesting dilemma. I'm looking at uh, Becky's roster. So her kicker is on a bye, and I, I'm mm-hmm. kind of interested in getting your opinion on this. When you have a kicker on a bye, do you, when you go to the way Royer to pick up his replacement, do you drop your kicker or do you drop someone else on your roster? Because it, it seems almost tragic to drop a running back or a wide receiver to pick up a bye week fill in at mm-hmm. kicker, but also you don't really want to drop McPherson flat out. Someone yeah. might pounce on him. Yeah, for me it's it's really dependent on who I have. Uh McPherson is right on the borderline of those guys that I would be willing to drop and not drop. Uh I would love to be able to drop somebody if possible that wasn't uh that kicker. But sometimes that's just how the cookie crumbles. Same with me. Like when Tyler Bass goes on by, I would like to keep him because he's yeah. one of the better kickers in the league. Uh, although he did miss two two field goals on uh, Sunday night, which yeah. was wild. That saved me in one of my leagues. Um, but, yeah, I, I would always like to keep uh, the kicker as long as he's in the upper echelon of kickers because, you know, th- they can win you weeks sometimes. Okay. Next on my list is Malik's last place team playing Ian's team. Uh, Malik, oh, he's going to be riddled by bye weeks. <laughs> oh, Chase, Lamb, Lamb, Hopkins, his kicker, his defense, all on buys. That's brutal. Yeah, a lot of his top players. He's got Mike Williams still on the IR. Uh, he'll have to fill in pickings. He's going to have to uh, some, make some waiver wire moves. He's got people that he can drop, so I don't think that's too big of a deal, but yeah, Malik may be chalking it up as an auto loss. We'll see uh, what he decides to do. You know, that's something you got to take into consideration on draft day is you've got to look at those bye weeks. I mean, you know, when you're talking about drafting Chase or Lamb, you know, they're, those are two uh, quality wide receivers. So I don't know if you consider bye weeks when you're drafting them. But now, yeah. look, his two top wide receivers are going to be yeah, it, it's um, tougher totally. in his scenario where he's one in five and he's right on that cusp of being um, eliminated from the playoffs and stuff like that. But normally I try not to think too much on buys because that can mess up your draft day if you have yeah. you know good players come to you. But 
you have to be a little bit aware of it. So, well, unfortunately for Malik, Ian is at full <laughs> yeah. strength. I don't see a questionable status. I don't see a buy. Yeah. Uh, he is at full strength. The only one that looks questionable is Aaron Jones, but I think he's trending in the right direction. Um, he's also going to get Deontay Johnson back this week, uh, which could help his uh, wide receiver room mm -hmm. if he so chooses. Um, next on my list is another attempt at taking Tracy's top-notch team down, and that's the <laughs> Dak Knight Rises. And uh, Marie is going to have to replace Dak Prescott, the leader of her team. But she does have Kirk Cousins. Unfortunately, he hasn't been playing too well the last, like, two weeks. Right. You know, the thing you were – like, I have him in another league, and you sort of count on the Vikings being down and playing catch-up. Mm -hmm. um, but they – they did get a win this week, but they just did not look good doing it. And yeah. Cousins isn't as reliable as he was early in the season to give you 30 points a game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Oh, she is without Derrick Henry as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that could be pretty big. Uh, she does have Jerome Ford as her backup. They're going against Indy, which is a pretty decent matchup. So maybe that's an okay replacement. But uh, both teams kind of dealing with uh, some, some bye week fill-ins. Tracy going back to that patent and double tight end <laughs> lineup. Yeah. So um, what's the projection? Looks like she has the edge, but like I said, she's yeah she's conceding a loss this week, but she yeah we haven't doesn't look that bad. Yeah, if you put in the fourteen points for Cousins, that puts Marie at ninety eight, and then you give her any running back. She is projected above Tracy right now. Um. If she just replaces players. Right, right. Um, Cause she uh, also, oh, she also has Amari Cooper. I forgot Derek Henry's in her flex, so she can put in like Amari Cooper or something yeah. as well. So, so the only, the only person that Tracy needs to target on waivers is a defense. Mm -hmm. um, Which usually there's some good options out there. Yeah. Uh, for defensive matchups. All righty. And now this week, I'm going to have to try to get, drake to set his lineup or do something with it <laughs> i know his his team is somewhat decimated once justin jefferson went down but just so that he has a, a chance against sammy which looks like sammy's basically at full strength yes he is yeah um only a backup running back that's going to be out this week so he's mm. projected 121 which i think is the most on the week uh wow which could be pretty pretty crazy week for him yeah and so drake his Stroud is on a bye. Fields is doubtful. Yeah. So it he's looks like going to have to hit the waiver wire for a quarterback. Yeah. Uh, Jefferson's on IR, so he's gone for at least four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. He, he, his tight end's on a bye. He has some work to do. I, uh, yeah. And he has an empty roster spot. That's <laughs> something. That makes me scratch my head is when people have an empty roster spot. I mean, I know you just have to have a starting lineup, but I would never have an empty yeah. roster spot. Take a shot at someone. Take, yeah. you know, a third string rookie who might get their, you know, their shot in a few weeks. Just stash them, but yeah. don't have usually, an empty roster spot. Yeah, it's usually a good idea to always have your roster full. Yeah. And then finally, Joe versus Jordan. <laughs> uh, Joe, you're trying to make a bounce back this week. Uh, what does your uh, bye week stuff look like? Um, oh, you said Damian Pierce. Yeah, Pierce. Uh, as of right now, let's see. Gibbs. If Gibbs returns uh back to the Lions this week, that would be a plus for me. Mm -hmm. Um, if not, I'm going to have to hit the waiver wire for a running back because uh Williams isn't trending in the right direction. Pierce is on a bye. I have uh, Wilson, Miami's running back Wilson, stashed on IR. Yeah. There is so, a chance that he could be activated for that game. Yeah, are, I, th I think saying. he could have come back last week. But yeah. I think they're being cautious with him. Mm -hmm. uh, if he gets a go, then he I might put him in the starting lineup. But if not, right. uh, I'm going to have to hit the waiver wire. Yeah. And then Jordan, he's going to need to – yeah, he needs to pick up a tight end. And he's going to have to replace Brees Hall, who's been playing really good. But he yeah. does have Ramondre Stevenson, which I am not confident in Ramondre Stevenson this season. I drafted in my other league, and it's just been awful to try yeah. to bank on him. Um, so the projections right now, even if Jordan fills those spots in, this looks like this could be the closest game of the week. I 
hate to tell you that. But, uh, <laughs> you, you might be involved in another close one. Uh, uh, let's hope it doesn't come down to fourth quarter Monday night. Yeah. I do have uh, Addison playing on Monday night against San Francisco. That's a tough matchup, but you know I like having somebody <laughs> going on Monday night to at least give yeah. me a chance at keeping it close. You know, right. That's what's scaring me this week about uh, facing Becky because she has three of the Sunday night players. She also has a Monday night player going. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to have a big lead going into Sunday and Monday uh, night before I feel comfortable about my score. So that could be a scary one. Hopefully Christian McCaffrey plays. I do have San Francisco's defense mm-hmm. playing uh, Minnesota, and mm-hmm. they, that could be a potential for some points the way Minnesota's been playing and not having Jefferson. So we'll see. Yeah. So we've uh, we've hit our first big bye week. It's going to be pretty crazy, I think. And uh, once again, we're all gunning for you, Tracy. <laughs> 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 and uh, if I, I guess last thing we'll look at is the standings real quick because they are starting to – not a lot of separation, but it's it's getting there. Tracy's still undefeated, sitting first. I'm at second, tied with Ian, four and two. I am ahead of him just because of points. Uh, Becky, Sammy, Marie, and Jordan all sitting at three and three. And then we have Joe, you're in eighth. Malik and Drake bringing up the rear. Both have one and five. It makes me nervous sitting on that bubble. Yeah. I would be more comfortable. Mm-hmm. If, I, if I get a win this week, uh, I'll be tied with Jordan, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll have to uh, wait and see how it goes, but everybody uh, hit that waiver wire like always, and good luck in week seven.